Hello Creative! It's your Graphics Girl of GraphicsGirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? I thought so. Head over to GraphicsGirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Even learning a few shortcuts will save you so much time and make you look so much more professional. Just click the link below. To set type in Illustrator, you'll use the Type tool. When you click down on your artboard one time with the Type tool, the new version of Illustrator puts in Greek text as a placeholder. You can just go ahead and ignore this and begin to type. If you're on an older version of Illustrator, you'll just get the blinking eye beam. In this case, I typed out the word topography, which is the art of setting type. So with my type tool still selected, and you can see my eye beam is still in there, I could click back to select all of the type, or I could click and select just one character. Right now, this copy is editable. And by that, it means that you could change the font, the point size, the color, really any attribute on the type. When you have a tool selected in your toolbar, the options menu at the top gives you other choices like font, font family, and point size. I'm able to change my font to something like Century Gothic. Your fonts on your machine might differ from mine and with the point size, I can increase it to 72 from the drop down at the top. Now 72 point is equivalent to one inch. 72 used to be the screen resolution of max. So now I'm gonna select it with the black arrow at the top of my toolbar, just to move it over. Now let's take a look at our character panel. You can show your character panel in your workspace by coming to window type character or command or control T. So once you have that panel selected, it will either fan out from your workspace or appear to be its own panel. Put that back into my workspace. And here I could change the font just as I did before. And I can scroll through all my different typefaces. Again, you might have different fonts on your machine than I have on mine. The point size or the size of the type can be selected right here in the drop down to the right directly below the font. You don't have to be restricted to just these choices, however. You can click in the field and type out a point size. You can also incrementally set the font size up or down using these up or down arrows. But honestly, I don't use it to change my point size. I use my shortcuts. So I'm gonna highlight all my copy here and show you a few shortcuts. To decrease the font or point size, I choose Command or Control, Shift, less than. To increase the point size, I do Command or Control, Shift, greater than. Can you see that in my character panel, the point size has been increased? So that's a really fast and handy shortcut that I recommend you using. Above the point size in your character panel is the font family. So a full font family will allow you to have other options such as bold, bold italic, or condensed. So when you choose the font, you might have some other font styles that you could choose. Directly below the point size in your character panel is the kerning. So kerning is the space between two individual characters. To change the space between these two, you put your cursor down in between two individual letters, and then you do Command or Control, Shift, right bracket. The more you hit down the right bracket, the further apart the two letters become. Next, to decrease the space between two letters, or decrease the kern, you could hit Command or Control, Shift, left bracket. You can see here, I'm going to stop so you can see that there is still a space between these two letters, the T and the Y. But when you come to your character panel, you'll see that the kerning has been set to 240. 
So to reduce or reset this back to zero, I could just select this number and hit zero. Now there's no space other than the normal spacing between the letters in this font. You see here between the R and the A in topography, there's a little bit more space that was created. Like I would say these two letters are fine. Let's say you wanna decrease the space between the P and the H. You could just use your shortcut there or you can manually type in an amount or from the drop down, you could choose one of these. In general, negative numbers reduce the current and positive numbers increase it. Where you see this used more often than not is when you have a large like drop cap and then the next letter after that needs to be tightened up a little bit. I also use this uh, when I'm creating logos so that you're not just using the font as given, rather tightening it up. You want to tighten up letters so that it increases legibility and comprehension of the word. Logos particularly need to act as one tight unit. So here, I kind of like the way the kerning is on this word now. But if you wanted to increase or decrease the space between multiple characters uniformly, you would not use the current. Here, I'll reset my current to zero multiple characters would be tracking. So to the immediate right of the kerning is the tracking. Here, same thing from the drop down, you could choose a negative amount, but you do have to have all of the characters selected. So with all of the characters selected from the drop down, I could choose a negative amount and say minus 100. Now it's super tight. So tracking is the amount of space between multiple characters. You can think of this in terms of multiple characters, multiple words, or an entire paragraph of sentences. So just like before, instead of using the drop down, I could type in the field, minus 50, or my personal favorite, my keyboard shortcut. You wanna select all of the letters, and then it's Command or Control Shift, right bracket, left bracket. But graphics girl, that's the same shortcut as kerning. Why, yes it is. <laughs> So shortcuts really help save you a lot of time and the shortcuts that are on my free shortcuts cheat sheet are ones that you'll use over and over again. Actually not only even in just Illustrator but many times across multiple programs. So I encourage you to go ahead and download it if you haven't already. So that's our character panel with the font, font family, point size, kerning, and tracking. There's a few more settings in this panel, but first I want to show you something really cool that you can do in Illustrator regarding type. If I take my type tool in my tool palette here and highlight all of my copy, under the type menu now, you can also see that you have the option of doing your fonts and it records your recent fonts you've used and the point size as well. But it's right down here called change case that you have the ability to make your copy that you've typed out, all uppercase or all lowercase, title case and sentence case. I love this option and I do it all the time. So if you've typed out a word and then you're like, oh, I wish I had the caps lock on when I typed it, you can come to type, change case, uppercase. And when you choose that, topography now is all uppercase. See here, I can make it all lowercase, title case, and then sentence case. So title case, you would see if you had two words, you know. Now you can see that I have title case, every word is capped. If I select this and then I choose sentence case, the word becomes lowercase. So I use this function all the time. It's so convenient. Next, I'm gonna do a different word here. I'll use the word H2O. So as a recap, I could come up here, change my font to something else. I'll do impact. And here, if I wanted this number two to be a superscript or subscript, I do have that option right here under subscript. But if you're ever not 100% happy with the placement, then you could choose to manually set the baseline, be it above or below that baseline. If you think in terms of the baseline or where your characters lie, here I'll show my rulers, Command or Control R, and then pull down a guide from the top by clicking and dragging down. 
Now, if I select the number two and decrease my font by hitting Command or Control, Shift, less than, now with my baseline, I could make it lower off the baseline. So similarly to its left is superscript. How about y'all? <laughs> is that really a word? Not sure. Here, with the baseline shift, I could increase it even higher above my baseline. And then, of course, reducing the current, Command or Control, Shift, left bracket. You can see that you have a lot of flexibility in terms of typesetting in Illustrator. There's one more term in topography that you should get to know, and that's letting. Letting is the space between lines, meaning, you know, single space, double space. If I click down and select all of these lines, I could come to the paragraph panel. To show your paragraph panel, you come to window type paragraph. So with your paragraph panel shown in your workspace, you have the ability to change the alignment of multiple lines, such as left align, centered, you can also see the paragraph alignment in your options menu at the top. Next in your paragraph panel is justification. Here, you could have the left and the right margins begin and end at the same point for use in a column format for newsletters where you might want a clean space between individual columns known as the gutter. Here, in this justification, the last line is aligned left. In this one, the last line is centered. The last line in this one is right aligned. It's this one here where you could justify all of the lines, meaning the last line is flush left and flush right. So to set the paragraph alignment or justification, you need to have more than one line. Next, let's talk about the space between these lines, also known as letting. Here, you could keep your selection tool on or highlight the copy with your text. It doesn't matter. So if I go ahead and highlight all of my lines here, on my keyboard, a shortcut to decrease the space between lines is Alt or Option, Up Arrow. You can get so close, they're on top of one another. To increase the space between lines, it's Alt or Option, the Down Arrow. And you can just hold any one of these shortcuts. You don't have to click, click, click. If you want to do this manually in the panels, you come back to the character panel. And it's right here to the immediate right of the point size is your letting. So just like before, you could incrementally do it with the up or down arrow or choose it from the drop down. Lastly, of course, you can always manually type in an amount. So here, if my point size is 76, perhaps I want 78 or two points over my type size is a good rule of thumb. So whether you choose to use shortcuts or the panels or a combination of the two, that's how you set and modify type in Adobe Illustrator. You can do this, okay? So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, Woo! share it with your friends, hey! and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.